6095 Thriller Lady Killer Part 1 Take 1 Sorry, no. Thank you. Yeah, she's the one, no doubt about it. Height, hair, colouring right down to her shoe size. Better still, she gets hardly any mail. A lonely girl. Yes, I'm about to fall desperately in love with Jenny Frith, single, dress size 12, shoe size 8, from Muncie, Indiana. What does one do in a place like this? Oh, I'm so sorry. I've disturbed you. Oh, no. no, I was talking out loud. You didn't really. No. Are you sure? Yes. Well, I think I did. Anyway, as I was thinking out loud, I'll ask it again. What on earth does one do in a place like this? Um, well, um, let's see. I usually uh, take a walk along the seafront and... Did that early this morning. Uh, do you have a good book to read? Oh, I'm not really in the mood for reading. I have a better idea. Why don't we just talk? People don't do that these days, do they? Talk, communicate. I don't think I'm particularly dull, and I'm sure you have lots of interesting things to tell. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm not very Oh, nonsense. Let's give it a try, anyway. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I really have no right whatever to come no, no, here. No, no, no. It's all right, really. I'd like to talk. You're not offended? Oh, no. Honestly? No, honestly, really. Well, if we're going to into talk, I'm going to introduce myself. Paul Tanner. Uh, I'm Jennifer Frith. From, don't tell me, Indiana. How did you know that? Uh, no, I've traveled the States quite a bit, and I've got a good ear for an accent. Oh. Am I right? Absolutely right, yes. Oh, dear. I suppose I'm fed up with this place, because I've just taken a place myself by the coast. Oh. Busman's holiday. Uh, Busman's uh, 
Christmas. Christmas holiday? No. Well, it's an English phrase. It means no holiday at all. Don't ask me why. <laughs> Ours is a funny language, isn't it? Well, um... <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like some coffee? Oh, I'd love some. Thank you. Yes. And then you can tell me all about yourself. And I won't be bored anymore. Well, I can't promise that. Better still. Be good for my ego. Your uh, ego... It, it's... Uh, Always good for a man's ego to be seen in the company of an attractive woman. Paul. Of course I got through to her candy from kids. Listen, we have an interesting common. Shelley. Yes, romantic, isn't it? Get me a copy of his poems, will you? He's a poet. Oh, yes, we're having dinner tonight at eight. says that it's about uh, 8, 8 uh, 20... 28, miss. Yes. And it's right. Um, you checked before. That's right, I did. We uh, stop serving dinner soon, miss. You'll have to hurry. Thank you. I will. Apologize enough. I had a meeting the other side. A town of my car broke down. It's perfectly right. I'm ready. so sorry. It doesn't matter. You're here. That's all that matters. Do you forgive me? Of course I do. Really. I kept her waiting 30 minutes and she loved me for it. Yes. <clears throat> I was starving by that time. It was coming along beautifully. And tomorrow she gets a whirlwind of romantic pleasures. Starting with a full flower treatment. Where are we going? Shelley's birthplace. You're kidding. But that must be miles away. 200 to be exact. That's why we have a car. But don't you have business things that you have to do and... Uh... Cancel them. I've always intended to make the pilgrimage and somehow I just never got round to it. I know now why. I needed someone to share it with. Exhausted. I didn't know how wearing English poets could be. We've been everywhere. Hmm. Everywhere. Anyway, the hook's baited. And tonight's the night. Cream, no sugar. Right. Getting used to you. Meeting you... <coughs> I, I... I expected all this to be just work. <laughs> you haven't done much of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is your fault. Oh, Jenny. Jenny. Oh, I hate goodbyes. I just hate them. There's a phrase. Everybody uses it and very few actually mean it. It's been nice meeting you. Jenny, it's mad and it's crazy, but I'm not going to be able to leave you behind tomorrow. I want you to come with me, be my wife. Oh, Paul! I know it's ridiculous and I know we've only known each other days, but I love you. Oh, I love you. <laughs> should have been a big affair. Oh, darling, it was lovely. No, white. A dozen bridesmaids. Oh, but I don't mind, Paul. Really, I don't. It's so quiet here. So tucked away. Darling, 
We have so much ahead of us. Yes. It's a woman's touch. Oh, it's really lovely. You go on through. I'll be with you in a moment. Oh, I just love these old places. There's so much charm and, and uh, texture. Uh -huh. It's really lonely, though, isn't it? I don't think I saw another house for the last two miles. There's an old boy lives on the other side of the cliff, but um, you're right, it is lonely. But then when I took it, I didn't know I was going to be taking your wife as well. But now you're here, it's not going to be lonely anymore. It's going to be wonderful. Oh, I know what. As soon as possible, we'll have a housewarming, okay? Housewarming? Well, that's the traditional thing, isn't it? Of course, there won't be any of my friends here, but your friends. I'm dying to meet them. You do have friends, don't you? Of course I do. Hey, stay away from here. What was that? No, there was a click on the line. Don't say anything. I'll be in touch. Front door key. Well, I thought I'd better return it. Mrs. Bradley, I used to clean for the last people who's lived here. Oh, you really startled me. I'm Miss, um, I'm Mrs. Tanner. Yes, I know. Oh. Well, I hadn't heard anything, so uh, I thought I'd better return the key. Uh, heard anything about, uh... Whether I'd still be required or not to clean. Oh, I see. Oh, well, of course I want you to stay. This place is much too big for me to take care of by myself. I didn't come here begging for Joe. Oh, no, 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 really. I'd love it if you'd help, if you will. <laughs> Tell you the truth, I'd, I'd really appreciate the company as well. It's 
three mornings a week. Oh, fine, yes. Hmm. Well, I'll better get started then. are you doing? What? What have you done to your hair? Well, I, well, I, I put it up this morning. And, and I, your makeup? Well, Paul, I just did it for And the jewelry and that dress! I thought you'd like it, Paul! You don't look anything like! Jenny! I shouldn't have blown my top like that. I'm sorry. I just can't stand painted faces. Sophisticated women. And when I saw you just now, suddenly... It wasn't you. It wasn't the girl I married. The girl I fell in love with. I love you, Jenny. You, just the way you are. I didn't mean... I just wanted to please you, that's all. Oh. And you succeed beyond my wildest dreams. Oh, yeah. Oh, you look terrible. <laughs> now, clean up your face and revert to the girl I know. Yes? Okay. Well, Mrs. Bradley thought it was a tremendous improvement. Mrs. Bradley? Uh-huh. She's the woman who cleans for us. I didn't hire a cleaner. I know. That's one important item you overlooked, Mr. Tanner. I'll get one tomorrow. No. No need. We have Mrs. Bradley. As a matter of fact, she used to clean here before. Perhaps I won't like Mrs. Bradley. Well, I don't think you have to, <laughs> since I'm the one who has to deal with her. Yes, well, as long as she's not the nosy type, I can't bear people who pry. Oh, she's very nice. Very efficient. A uh, bit of a busybody, but uh, I like her. Darling, letting me have my choice of cleaning woman isn't going to upset anything, is it? Of course it isn't. My husband bought it. I'm not in your life. Colonel Mallard's place, this is. Is that what he told you? He bought it? Well, no, not exactly. I, ju I just assumed that he... No, it belongs to Colonel Mallard. Well, it did. His executives look after it now. You know, the people who run things for you after you're buried. <laughs> yes, his executors. Yeah, that's it. 
Uh, don't approve of marriages where the husband has his own secrets. It's not a secret. I made a mistake, that's all. early. Well, with good reason. I felt so rotten about last night. Here. For me? Mm -hmm. I bought you a dress of my own choice and I can't make any silly complaints, can I? Oh, isn't that nice? Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, it's really lovely. Look, it's even my size. <laughs> you forgive me? Oh, thank you. Of course. Must fly. Got a meeting the other side of town. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Darling, you know, it's the funniest thing, but for some reason I had it in my mind that we owned this house, no? Aren't you glad we don't? Choosing a house to bring up a family, that's a job for two. We'll see the winter out here and then in the spring. Oh, darling. You're too good to me. Mm -hmm. See you later. Mm -hmm. I've made a mistake. Oh. No, the chap who just drove away, you see, I... Well, I followed him all the way from town. I could have sworn he was someone I knew, an old friend. Sorry. Oh, that's all right. Who do you think he was? Paul Tanner. Well, you're right. That was Paul. Was it? Yes. Well, what a coincidence. You, you know, I haven't seen him in years. <laughs> there I am driving through a quiet little town in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> that really is a coincidence. <laughs> they say it's a small world, don't they? Yes, they do. <laughs> well, I'm sure uh, Paul will probably want to see you... Uh, are you staying nearby, Mr... Uh... Hardesty. Hardesty. Mm, Jack Hardesty. Yes, I'm here for a couple of days, staying at the Bull Hotel. Oh, yes. Well, I've got the phone number, isn't it? Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. There you are. Ah, lovely. Thank you. I'll give it to him. Do. Well, well, well. It's quite made my day, seeing old Paul after all this oh. time. He looks well, too. Oh, he is. He really is. Hey, you wouldn't be Tony's sister, would you? Uh, Tony, I... I... Oh, and obviously not. Great girl, Tony, great. She's, uh, she's not here, then. Uh, I'm sorry. Who's Tony? Paul's wife. I'm Paul's wife. I'm Mrs. Tanner. But I didn't know Paul had remarried. I didn't even know he was divorced. Oh. I've really put my foot in it, haven't I? I'm very sorry. Uh, it, it's a perfectly logical mistake to make. Uh, everyone's been making it. I'm really getting used to it. And I'm sorry, just the same. That's all right. Well, perhaps old Paul won't be so pleased to see me after all. Um, I'll tell him you called anyway. Yes, do. It's a funny thing, you know. You might have been sisters. Oh, only superficially, you understand. But uh, from a distance, I actually thought you were, Tony. Same hair, coloring, build. Even the dress. <laughs> and you've both been Canadian. American. <clears throat> 
I'm an American, Mr. Hardesty. Well, to my ear, they both sound the same. Yes, I'm sure. Well, please forgive me again. Bye. Goodbye. It's a cleaner's label. Yeah. And you don't clean brand new dresses, do you? No, you don't, Mrs. Tanner. go along to the bank. Try and rescue some of my shirts. Well, I think I could do better playing the horses. All right, darling. You're not eating anything. I don't feel very hungry. I hope you're not getting flu. A lot of it about. Listen, if you do feel ill, let me get the doctor, will you? I don't want you being mucked around by these local quacks. I think perhaps you ought to have an early night. Search my things. Why didn't you tell me that you'd been married before? Something that I don't like to talk about. For people. Why? 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 I'm sorry, Jenny. That was foolish and stupid of me. I should have told you before. It's something, it's something I'm trying to forget. No, Paul, please don't do that. That's not true. You know Jenny. it's not true. Look at the photograph. Look at the hair. Look at the type. That could be me. Even the dress. This dress. It's her dress, isn't it? Well, you must have loved her very much. You want to recreate her and me. But Paul, I don't want to be an imitation. I don't want to be just a carbon copy of someone else. I want to be loved for me. Now, if you loved someone else when we got married, you should have told me. I know. I, I know, but you've got it all wrong. I didn't love her. I hated her. I, I don't know why I wanted you to look like her. Maybe, maybe it was to try and to, to exercise it from my mind. Maybe it was to persuade myself that someone who looked like her didn't have to be bad. Maybe it was my way of replacing her. Of totally replacing her with you. Well, if that's true. Of course it's true. Where is she now? Dead. An accident. For me, a fortunate accident. Her death only touched me with relief. Oh, Paul. I'm so sorry. 
Oh, what have I done? I searched your things. It's all right. It's, it's not it's all, all right. right. It isn't all right. And I don't know why I did it. I, I just... I felt that I had to. I understand. I understand. I think it was the shock of, of, of hearing it from a total stranger. What? Oh, there was a man here um, this morning just as you left. What man? He caught a glimpse. Um, I, t I don't even remember his name. Wait a minute. He left his number. Uh, Hardesty. Jack Hardesty. Yes, do you know him? Yes, of course I know him. Well, what else did he have to say? Uh, nothing, just that uh, he's staying here at uh, this number, and he wants you to call him. He wasn't sent here by anyone? No, darling, he, he just happened to be going by. It was a complete coincidence. Oh. Oh, well, I, I think I ought to call him. It'd be nice to see Jack again after all this time. Can I speak to Mr. Hardesty, please? What? When? Thank you. Checked out. First thing this morning. It's funny. Said he'd be around for a couple of days. Hmm. Maybe he had something to attend to. <laughs> I think perhaps you ought to get dressed. You me. You're just gonna have to get used to it. Mm. <laughs> you have my full approval. Thank have you. a good day. You too. news about Jack. No, I just hope he left the district for good. <laughs> it's not an exact match, but the colour's the same. It's the best I could do. All right, people only remember the colour. Yeah, I hope you're right. Tony, mm. she's changed her hair. Oh, has she? Yeah, she's, um, she's wearing it up now. What? Sort of like that? Mm -hmm. Except she's got a, a bun with curls on on the top. Oh, okay. okay. I'll have it said later today. We're not around here, though. Somewhere far away. Hey, don't worry. I'll be careful. <sighs> you are worried. Yes. Hardesty. I've got a funny feeling about him. Oh, I forgot to tell you. I think I saw your friend again today. Friend? Mm-hmm. Hardesty. I'm sure it was him. Where do you think you saw him? Right at the bottom of the driveway. Then when I waved, he just drove off. Oh, no. It couldn't have been him, could it? He'd have come in. Yes. Funny, though. He was parked right outside. It's 11.30. It's all right. I'll take it.
Jack. Long, long time no see. Indeed. Do you know what time it is? Hmm? Ah. 11.35. Yeah, sorry about that, Paul. You see, I wanted to talk to you alone. No point in involving your, uh, wife. Darling? Who is it? Get rid of her. It's Jack. Hello. He either has no manners or a cheap watch. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though, um, I think he wants to talk to me about some business. Now? I'm afraid so, yes. I, I'm going abroad tomorrow. I won't be back for a couple of months. Sorry about that. You go back to bed. I'll make some coffee. No, that's all right, thank you. Prefer a drink, wouldn't you, Jack? Absolutely. Okay. Good night, Mr. Hardesty. Good night. I won't keep him long. Thank I you. promise. Good night. Drink? Why not? The usual. Yes. Large. Is there any other kind? <laughs> Tried to phone you back, but you checked out. Yeah, sorry about that. I, I had to rush back to town. Oh, you busy man. Well, you know me, Paul. And I know you. Thanks. <laughs> so, you had to go back to town? Hmm, yes, I wanted to browse through some public records. Oh, really? Took me some time to... I wanted to be sure, absolutely sure. You know something, Paul? There is no record of your divorce from Tony. No death certificate either, so she's still alive and married to you, and you're a bigamist, mate. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what the score for bigamy is, but I'd say it's worth... Ooh, five years. Cheers. Go on. Well, it took me some time to work it out. Work out what? To work out where the profit was. And where we are concerned, there's always a profit, right? And then it struck me, clear as a cloudless day, your new wife. And how closely she resembles Tony. Oh, not identical, but enough. Because that's all a witness really remembers, isn't it? The overall, the, uh, the bare essentials. It's good, Paul. I like it. It's beautiful. Much better than we've ever dreamed up before. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Come off it. This is Jack. Remember? Jack Hardesty. Do you want me to spell it out to you? Do you want me to tell you exactly what you... That's the general picture, I think. Oh, I may have some of the finer details wrong, but that's about it. How much do you want? Half. Half? You've got to be crazy. I know I'm holding a good hand, Paul. And you've never dealt a better one. <laughs> I don't even have to bargain. Half it is and half it's going to be. You can have all the time in the world to think it over. I don't mind, because I know what the answer has to be. Yes. I'll have to talk to Tony. Sure, sure. Go ahead. It won't change anything, though. Well, as it, um, it looks as though we're back in business again. Let's celebrate the reunion, eh? <laughs> Why don't you help yourself to a cigar? Sounds wonderful. Havana, hmm? I say you've laid out quite an investment here, haven't you? No answer. Maybe she's off somewhere. 
getting married to someone else. Hmm? <laughs> 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 I tell you one thing, Jack. <clears throat> I bet you remember that time we took a boat on the river, yes? With those two girls, hmm? And you got stuck with the ugly one. <laughs> of course you remember. You always had buck teeth. <laughs> I particularly remember one thing you said to me, Jack. You said I'd be the death of you. <laughs> yes, we must do this again sometime. <laughs> when you get back. <laughs> putting the squeeze on. Yeah, I know. Well, we could have paid him off or anything. No. Half to me. He wanted half. <laughs> They'll find him. They'll find an unknown man eventually. Did they anything out of his pockets? Labels off all his clothing? His body. that identify his body. <laughs> I'd put him over the cliff, Tony. By the time he's washed up ten miles or so further on, there won't be much left to identify. That's what we've been gambling on all along, isn't it? The rocks and the seal do our job for us. It's Carl. His what? His car. His... I I'll take it and, and, and I'll put it in some anonymous car park. They won't find it for months. Yes. And we don't need months. This is it, Tony. All systems go. When? Later today. Jenny's going to have her hair done. Good morning. Nice one, too. Mm. Oh, lovely. Hey, where'd you go last night? Last night? Yeah. After Hardesty left, I heard his car go, and then when I went downstairs, you disappeared. Yes, I have a bit of a confession to make. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I got a bit drunk last night. So after Jack left, I went out for a walk. <laughs> in your bare feet. <laughs> I must be in love. Barefoot in the dewy grass, under the stars, the pale moonlight. Oh, wild west wind, the breath of winter's being. 
autumn's being. There wasn't any moon last night, and I doubt very much if you saw any stars. Hmm. When I look at you, I always see stars. Oh, yeah. Now, I want you to pamper yourself today. Hairdressing, manicure, the lot. Nope. You pamper me too much. No, I insist. Anyway, the appointment's already made. Two oh. o'clock. Well, I have no choice. None whatever. Okay, Want thank some you. coffee? Oh, I'd love it. You always rely on a British neighbor in a time of crisis. Mm. Oh, you are heavy. Go on. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Hello. I don't hate to intrude, but your wife, Mrs. Tanner, appeared to be taken ill. Yes. Yes, she's, she's had some sort of blackout, a fainting fit of some kind. I've, I've just put her to bed. Sorry. <laughs> what was that? Um, she, she just had a, a blackout, a, a fainting fit. I've, I've put her to bed. Oh. Only I wondered if I could be any help. Well, it's, it's very kind of you, but um, she's resting now, and I'll try and persuade her to see a doctor. And, uh... Anything I can do, please let me know. Thank you. You're very kind. I hope it's nothing serious. Oh, yes. So do I. Hello. Don't forget, if I can help at all... You're very, very kind. Thank you too much. Thank you. Not at all. No. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Thank you. Witness number one. Oh, your heart seems very sound. Blood pressure's all right. All the same, I'm not too happy about these blackouts you've been having. And just how many have there been, Mrs. Uh, Tanner? Oh, uh, about five in all. Hmm. I think to be on the safe side, you ought to have a cardiogram. Now, I can arrange that for you on... Uh, oh, next Wednesday at 11.30, that suit you? Yes. Next Wednesday, that'll be fine. Good. In the meantime, just rest. Get some fresh air, occasionally, of course. But uh, nothing too vigorous. Right. And uh, have this prescription made up. There you are, Mr. Tanner. That's wonderful. Thank you very much, Doctor. Let's take it easy. Lovely. Now, why the sudden flurry of attention? It isn't sudden. And besides, I thought you needed it. Oh. Yeah, I was looking at you this morning. Yes. I think you look a bit pale. Really? Hmm. I feel fine. Yeah, that may be, but that flu thing is still going around, so... You know, we have to look after you. So, why don't you stay in bed? Oh, come on. I'm not an invalid. Humor me. Girls like you are scarce. Now, do as Dr. Paul says. Just stay in bed, just for an extra hour. All right. Dr. Paul. That's better. And, uh... What else does the doctor prescribe? Please. And this. Uh -uh. Overdose could be disastrous for the doctor. Ready. Morning. Uh, Mrs. Tanner won't be down right away. She's going to stay in bed for a while. She's not feeling too well. Oh, dear. Well, I hope she'll be all right. Well, you've probably noticed. You must have noticed that she hasn't been herself recently. Uh, yes, yes, I have. Um, is it uh, another of those blackouts, then? Who told you? Oh, Mr. Pembury from down the road. I I'll clean for him, too. He said he saw a pass right out, he said. Like death. Yes. I didn't expect news to travel quite so fast. Huh? Well, I do hope it's nothing serious. Oh, I'm sure it isn't. But I would like you to promise me one thing. Um, Mrs. Tanner's a bit sensitive about 
Well, I, I mean, she doesn't like the people to think she's some sort of invalid. So, uh, what we've discussed, the, the blackouts, I'd rather you didn't mention them to her. Oh, oh no, Mr. Tanner. Because, because if you did, uh, I really think it might make her even worse. <laughs> she might pass out on you or something. Oh, I, I won't mention it, sir, I promise. Good. It'll be our secret. So it's up to you now? Yes. Oh, Paul, hey, I wish we could... Don't break up now. Oh, Come no. on. Got to go through with it. We're too close now. Oh, I wouldn't do anything else. I want to go through with it. I want to see it. Hasn't been easy for me the past few weeks, you know. Thinking about you and her together. I've been jealous. Kiss me. No other woman would have just stood by. Yes, I know. But I saw us, isn't it? We can put aside emotions. Only just. We can put them aside and go for the clean, cool money. I think I ought to go. So when? Mrs. Bradley leaves at one. The old boy go for his walk at two. Yes, but when do you make your move? Two fifteen. At that time, the old boy will be close enough to see it happen, but not so close that he can say how. Yes, wanted to be. Man belongs with his wife once in a while. All work and no play. <laughs> well, today is going to be all play and no work. Oh. We're going to have dinner, go for a walk, have a drink. <laughs> in which order? Drink first. Do you want one? Oh, no, thanks. Then we'll go for a walk on the cliff. Oh, won't that be nice? We'll have it all to ourselves this time of day. I'm fine. Why? Uh, nothing's uh, bothering you, or uh... no? Uh, what could be? Uh, I don't know. I, I I just wondered. That's all. Hey, you well, don't. I'll go and change my shoes. Um, darling. Uh, I I've never asked you, um, you know, about your business. Uh, all those deals that. Uh, take up so much of your time. I, I, I guess I figured that if you wanted to talk about them, you would, so yes. what? Well, I don't want to talk about them, and I won't. Oh, uh, so, uh, then everything, uh, is going all right, then? Yes, everything. As planned. Darling, I hope you don't mind my asking about your business. It's just that... You seem so moody and, and withdrawn lately, as if you're worrying about something, and... <laughs> it would be just like you to keep it from me, not to worry me. But, darling, if it is business, I mean, if, if things just don't happen to be going too well right now, please, I beg you to let me know. As if it you see, I have about a million dollars of my own. A million dollars? Oh. Probably even more than that by now, with uh, interest and so on. Well, why didn't you tell me? You never asked. You assumed I had a small allowance enough to travel on, but you never asked further. And I respected you for that. But also, um, I didn't want you to know. Why? <laughs> it's not unknown for a man to marry a woman for her money. 
that you married me because you love me. Huh, million dollars. This changes everything. Ah, so you do need money. Oh, no. No. Oh, no, no. No, I wouldn't touch a penny of it. No, it's just... It's just for a... To discover that you've married an heiress, it's a bit of a shock. <laughs> You'll adjust. <laughs> yes. Aren't you going to get that? No. No, we promised a date to ourselves. Just ourselves and no one else. No work. Yes, this is Mrs. Tanner. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I don't understand. For your cardiogram, Mrs. Tanner. You remember we'd arrange it for next Wednesday at 11.30, but unfortunately I now find I have a hospital call at that time, so I rather wondered if we could put it back into... your appointment, Mrs. Tanner. <laughs> well, I'm afraid there must be some mistake. You are Mrs. Tanner? Yes, I am Mrs. Tanner, but uh, you must mean some other Mrs. Tanner. Uh, uh, just a minute. What is it that I'm supposed to be suffering from? Oh, fainting fits and blackouts. Mrs. Tanner, I'm very much afraid you may have suffered another. Why else wouldn't you remember being here? <laughs> because, Doctor, I never was. <laughs> this is Jack Hardesty, Mrs. Tanner. I'm leaving this with a good friend with instructions to mail it to you if he doesn't hear from me within 24 hours. It's my insurance, so to speak. <laughs> yes, I know a lot about insurance, Mrs. Tanner. So does Paul. Oh, Paul's good. Yes, the best con man I ever knew. He and Tony, his first wife, or rather his real wife. Oh, she's still married to him, you know, still around. And what's more, Tony's life is insured. Oh, a big, big son. What's more, she took out the policy three years ago. Yes, that's how long they've been planning this. Now, no insurance company's going to get suspicious if she dies now, after three years. Except that Tony doesn't fancy dying just yet. Now, that's where you come in. You look like her. You look like the woman who took that medical and signed those forms three years ago. You're established now as Paul's wife. And who's going to guess that he has two wives? You get the picture? Tony isn't going to die. You are. You're going to do her dying for her. And then Paul collects on her policy and they both melt away into the sunset. Goodbye, Mrs. Tanner. If ever you get to hear this, then this goodbye is final. No! Don't know. You can't know. Jenny!
Sweetheart, where do you get to? Darling. Where did you get to, darling, sweetheart? Tell me, what are you doing here? Come on, get out of Let here. Let go of me. Let go. She may come in at any time. Oh, well, Fred, she'll see us together. Afraid we'll make Tony, if she go. comes in now, you... She isn't even here. She just ran out to the cliffs. So now's your chance, Paul. You obviously couldn't do it before, so do it now. I was going to call you. Oh, I'm sure you were. I was going to call you. Things have changed. Oh, things are you. You're feeling well, for her. Me. I don't want to... Listen to me! She's got a million dollars of her own. I, I was... She's got a million dollars. Oh, it makes what we're after look like chicken feed. A million dollars. Look, we're going to have to rethink. May take some time. Meanwhile, get out of here. Go on. How much time? I don't know. A few months, maybe six. No, Paul. No, no. What? No, we're going to do what we agreed as we agreed. Don't be ridiculous. She's got a million dollars, don't you see? Oh, I see very clearly. I know you too well, Paul. You're married to a millionaire, and she's crazy about you. You never had such luck before. I mean, you could... Why, why should you stick your neck out anymore? You could stop running now. You could just settle back with a girl who's got a fortune who's crazy about you. Oh, Tony, you don't think that I... No, I do think, and you've thought so too. It's written all over your face. Ditch me and stick to her. Tony... You can't ditch me, Paul. I'm your legal wife. I may not have a million, but I certainly have you, and I'm holding on to you. You are going to ruin everything. No, I'm going to settle everything. Tony, where do you think you're going? Tony! Finish off what we agreed. You can't do it, can you? Well, I will. She's out there right now, just waiting for one little push. Jenny is about to have one of her blackouts. Tony! Tony! So I'm scuttling off. We'll be here any minute. Oh, I tried to spare you this, darling, all along. I've, I, I've tried to protect you. But it's, it's, I, I, that's why I lied to you about my wife. She was dead. She, she's not dead. At least, at least she wasn't until a few moments ago. She, she's insane. Insane. How she ever found us here, I just never know. I should have had her committed years ago. She's mad. I, I mean, she's, 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 she's not mad. Jealous. She's mad. Oh, when I, when I think of how close she came to destroying you. You, because, because you're the only one I've ever loved. And I, I, I know I should have told you from the start. And, and, and this way is a, is a terrible shock, but you'll get over it. I have love enough for us to get over it. Perhaps it's better this way. An accident. Because it was an accident, wasn't it? I mean, you saw, didn't you? The old man, he... he the old man was, was too far away. He, he, he really couldn't see what happened. But you saw, didn't you? The way I, I rushed in to protect you. Yes. And you'll tell them? Yes. I'll tell them everything. Jack Hardesty. Everything. No, darling, not Hardesty. No, no, what, what happened just now on the cliffs? That's, that's all they're going to be interested in. On the cliffs? Yes. Yes, the accident, the way, the way I rushed in to protect you. I don't remember that. 
Of course you do. It was just a few minutes ago. I remember nothing. What do you mean you remember nothing? Jenny, I need you. If the old man tells his story without your version, they are going to hang a murder charge around my neck. Nothing. I must have had a blackout. I've been having them lately. Even you've been saying how ill I've been looking. Jenny, darling? Ask my doctor. You'll find I have a history of blackouts. Help me. Jenny!
morning, Miss Smith. Good morning. Jenny! Jenny!